drop, drop it on the random. What does joining Hip Hop Now's Patreon mean? It means supporting the kind of hip hop content that keeps you updated on the latest hip hop news and moves. It means supporting the production of content like That Time in Hip Hop and Hip Hop Now Reviews. It means you care about the conversation and preservation of hip hop music and culture. Hip Hop Now Patreon supporters get exclusive access to bonus content, merchandise, and more. Support the movement. Become a supporter of Hip Hop Now Podcast today at patreon.com forward slash hip hop now. Coming up on this week's episode of Hip Hop Now Podcast, Jada Kiss's new album gets pushed back out of respect for Pop Smoke's death. Jim Jones says that being a rapper is dangerous, but Waka Flocka disagrees. And Eminem sparks the Godzilla challenge. And all I want to know is. Read these headlines. This album must be gone. This, this album must be gone. 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 What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast designed to catch you up on all things hip hop music and culture that happened throughout the week. Returning listeners, I appreciate you. Welcome back. You know what to do. You know what it is. It's all love. New listeners, I'm glad you came through. Hope you stay. Hope you hit that subscribe button. Hope you hit that like button, comment if you will, and most importantly, share this content with people you know would enjoy it big shout out to hiphopdx.com allhiphop.com djbooth.net ambrosia for heads and a couple of places where i'm getting these stories from shout out to the patreon listeners got you let's get right to the business though so eminem put out a video for uh well, let's let's just get right into the nitty gritty, because I know some people are thinking to themselves who, you know, go online, but maybe don't follow everything. What the hell is the Godzilla challenge? What does it have to do with Eminem and why is everyone uh, doing this thing? So Eminem's new album, Music to be Murdered by, for which I reviewed and you can find right here on this podcast stream, uh, put out a video to his single Godzilla. and. It sparked a hashtag movement, which I don't know how these things start, but this one is pretty funny. It's called the Godzilla Challenge, and um, fans basically try to duplicate the amount of words and rapidly rapping Eminem's doing in the video. Now, when I first saw the video for, for the Godzilla joint, I was like, damn, I forgot how dope this is that quick. Because of, you know, all the wordplay and how many words he was able to fit in. It's not just how many words you're able to fit in to a bar and how fast you rap it and rapidly rap. Um, It's also that it made sense what he was saying. You know, some people just say, you know, mineral, mineral, mineral. Well, Eminem's been accused of doing that, too. But nevertheless, you know, it was funny that it started this thing where (laughs) people just started uh, trying to do the same thing. Some people seriously, some people jokingly, but I'm going to tell you like this. It always comes down to who won the challenge. And I got to give it up to the OG. Bismarcky, DJ Bismarcky to some of y'all now. You want to talk about hilarious. You want to talk about <laughs> hilarious. Uh, it kind of made my day because that, because honestly, I didn't know about the challenge until I saw Bismarcky and I was like, what the hell is Biz doing? Uh, it's a video of him. You could like Big Daddy Kane has posted it on Instagram, probably Biz himself also. Good old fun in the form of hip hop. Everybody join in. Now, yeah, I know I've had some words when it comes to Vlad. And that everything from Vlad TV is bad. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times he has a lot of guests who have a lot of good things to say. Um, 
I don't know if he know that's what's going to come out of the interview. He can say that after the fact for sure, definitely. Um, but sometimes when you're watching the interviews, things just happen. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Vlad may ask the right question. Uh, or he may ask a question that will give you an answer that you're like, what? So he had the clips, former manager, on um, Vlad TV on YouTube. I'm not a hater. Go and watch it. Show love because I watched it and it was interesting. Uh, Anthony Jeezy Gonzalez was the former manager of the Clips. And he said, and Vlad put it in his title. And I was thinking like, maybe maybe he embellished in the title a little bit. But Anthony Jeezy Gonzalez says that the Clips drug raps were 95% based on his life. Uh, he was a hustler, and if you listen to the clips, you know, that's that's kind of what they talked about, about hustling and stuff like that. And it seemed like it kind of started to, I don't know, get, get people a little riled up, uh, or not riled up. Well, yeah, I guess riled up because the thing is, is we live in an age, unfortunately, where everything you rap about, you you better have done. Or, or I guess people are not going to like your raps, right? But it's to me, it always seemed impossible. It seems likely that this dude who's a manager, who doesn't rap, who just got out from serving, I believe, like nine years, could say he did all of that. But it seems impossible when rappers say they live this ultimate drug dealer life and they're not in prison. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, some have been, but you know, then they just rap about the thing they did, did, and they don't plan to do it anymore. So I get it. But with the clips, some of what they was rapping about, like they, I used to call the locks, like the ultimate drug dealers as a joke back in the day when they first came out, because I always used to feel, feel like they went so far in their descriptions of, you know, hustling that it just made me think like, well, why you rap if if that's, you know, that's the life. Now, I know, obviously, they wasn't living like that. You know, they embellish a little bit. They kind of paint the picture like of, of a Scarface movie and, and tell the story in that way. You know, really extravagant to the extreme, the drug selling to the stream, the, the jury to the stream, the women to the stream, the cars to the extreme, the beef is to the extreme and the lyrics, right? Um, and I think that's okay because it's entertaining, man. I, I mean, I like gangster rap in the same vein. I like gangster movies, you know what I'm saying? I think it's storytelling. And if you embellish it, I'm not mad. I'm not like, yo, I need some receipts on that, all that drug deal talk. Not nah, <laughs> because at the end of the day, you are entertainer. And if you were living like that, you'd be locked up or you'd be dead. And we see it a lot with unfortunately uh younger rappers who they put more effort into that lifestyle than they put into actually making music and then when they do become big but they still been living a certain lifestyle you can't do both so when you look at the clips lyrics and if this guy's going to say what they was rapping about was 95% about him which i can i don't know Put it this way. Let's just let's just look at it collectively. And it's talking about everybody from Nas to Biggie, uh, even to Jay-Z to a certain extent. You know, most of these rappers came from a situation where they were hustling crack or drugs or or something else, right? But it would if they had to rap about it, it wouldn't be that extravagant because it wasn't really. It was it was something they did and they just rap about it in different ways. Um, and then sometimes they kind of talk about, you know, where they started and where they wanted to end up. It's kind of why like Jay-Z always been one of the dopest at that because of the simple fact that his hustling was above just street, you know, drug dealer a little bit. I don't know everything, but it never seemed like he was talking about something he wasn't showing you. Like if you go to In My Lifetime and all of that and Jay-Z's talking about Crystal and all of that, 
you like you seeing it. It ain't just video props because he wasn't on Def Jam originally. You know what I'm saying? It was what the, it was the lifestyle they was kind of coming from. And you see that with a lot of rappers. So do I look at the clips music now like, oh, yo, y'all rapping about him or or should this ex-manager come out with an album because we feel like it's going to be dope because it was his life anyway. So the music should be crazy. No, because what's the attraction to the clips, man? They could spit, right? That's what we love about. It. We love how they rap about it. So it it just doesn't make sense to even um entertain this to a certain degree. We get it, but a lot of rappers have done that. A lot of rappers have taken things they've done and what others done and uh turned it into stories and, and verses and stuff like that. And we love it for what it is. So let's stop trying to make our rappers commit as many crimes as possible just so they can go to prison and we could have a free, you know, uh push a t t-shirts on or rest in peace push a t let's just let push a t talk his millions of coke rhymes and be happy with them all right <laughs> uh jim jones had said recently and this was following the murder of pop smoke that being a rapper is dangerous and he went so far as to say even more dangerous than being a soldier. This has to be the most ignorant statement I've heard in a while. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I'm pretty sure somebody said something worse. But ignorant in the sense of timing, ignorant in the sense of a statement like that. Because I don't agree. But Waka Flocka didn't agree Neither did some soldiers, but he said this on um, on a video, Instagram post. You can check this article out on hiphopdx.com. And I quote, please stop saying rap is dangerous. Y'all and words is falling into the trap because if hip hop is dangerous, they're going to stop booking shows. Stop making hip hop popular. What are y'all doing, bro? Hip hop ain't dangerous. Hip hop is beautiful, bro. To be a gangbanger in rap is dangerous. To be a drug dealer in rap is dangerous. To be anything that's negative is dangerous. Somebody stand up and give this young man a round of applause, please. Right on point. Right on point. What I got from Jim Jones when he said that was more so somebody also trying to be cool. Instead of being mature or smart or an adult, you can't say that. People already think rap is dangerous. And now you have something like Pop Smoke situation happen. You have a history of things that have happened to rappers. Don't create this narrative, especially in the social media space, where it becomes that all rappers are dangerous. And now dudes can't just do shows because promoters are going to be afraid something's going to go down. Because it has. Now, Jim Jones does have a point. He's not totally wrong. Being a rapper can can often makes you a target. Whether you are a gangster, drug dealer or not. You can just be a dude. You can just be popular, whether you rap about it or not, and you can become a target. But in the same sense, that doesn't just apply to rappers. It's just, unfortunately, uh, magnified by the music and, and some of the music that they make. So if someone is harmless in real life, but they make nothing but gangster raps and something happened to them, People are going to look at the music. But people who want to rob you want to rob you, <laughs> period. So it doesn't matter. Like, we've heard about ball players getting robbed. We've heard about um, other athletes being targets. Um, the problem is, is, is mostly black folk. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to this, unfortunately. 
where this is happening because hip hop is all space. Just like Lord Jamar said, you know, if others are guests in it, you know, and this is our house, but in our house, a lot of times, you know, we got a lot of crooked stuff going on and not to say that it's not happening in other genres of music, but not to this degree. You may have some extortion. That's kind of par for the course when it comes to uh, people just making money and being in entertainment. You're going to get people who are after your pockets. Uh, but in hip hop, it just becomes a little bit more uh, dangerous if you're not moving correctly and keeping the right people around you and, um, you know, just watching out in general. You know, you could be the the the, the best the safest rapper ever. That doesn't mean they ain't some wolves looking for you. That doesn't mean that the Fresh Prince could just walk wherever he want. Not as Will Smith, but I'm talking about when he was Fresh Prince the rapper. You know what I'm saying? It didn't mean that he was safe no matter where he went because of what he rapped about. So there, there are points to be made on both sides, but at least in the case of Waka Flocka, um, I found his um, his opinion on it very mature, smart, and on point because it took care of a lot of things. It took care of hip hop's name. It took care of the business these rappers are trying to be in to to make money, um, and it was responsible. You know, it was a responsible statement. It says that new hip hop is missing creative innovation despite its success. And I quote, there's still a lot of stories to be told. This is a Hip Hop DX exclusive, so you can check that out. I feel like we keep getting these types of statements from older artists all the time. And obviously, it's absolutely 1,000% true. I mean, we talk about this on this podcast all the time, man. We talk about it all the time. It's difficult to... Look at an entire generation of new hip hop artists, current hip hop artists. Um, not talking about any legends or anybody whose heyday was in the '90s or '80s or whatever, but people who are popping now, like are the names now. It's difficult to sort through how many artists are just trash, or how many artists are just doing the same things, like. Spoiler alert, I'm reading the book about Cold Chillin' Records and the Juice Crew. Cold Chillin' Records, who made their name in the uh, 80s, uh, and the Juice Crew, popular, probably like the first crew crew like that of MCs who weren't a part of a group, um, but a part of a crew of MCs who worked under Marley Mall, and how... When Roxanne Shantae dropped in the book, this is a little spoiler, but in the book, they talk about UTFO saw Roxanne and how Roxanne Shantae kind of started the diss record by answering their original record, right? And how those things, that became so popular that there became so many versions and spinoffs of that situation, like Roxanne's father, Roxanne's revenge. We Roxanne's cousins. Like so many labels started to put out these songs that were linked to these two records from Roxanne Shantae and UTFO and how it got exaggerated after a while. And I looked at that like, wow, you know what? That's a lot like hip hop in general today. It's not that a song becomes popular and then it's just spinoffs of that song. It's in this regard, it's a style, it's an image, it's a uh, it's lyrics, it's a certain rapper archetype that's become popular in hip hop today. That they just constantly keep putting the same person out. I know they have different names. I know they have different voices and backgrounds, but there's nothing that distinguishes them unless you're looking for it. You can't just hear it. You can't, you can't be somebody who just come into the world and say, boom, let me turn on the radio. And they're able to say, that's little baby. That's big baby. That's the baby. Like they wouldn't be able to tell who is who. 
because a lot of a lot of what they do is exactly the same. And that's kind of the problem with today's hip hop, because what DMC is saying is hip hop is storytelling. And not many of these rappers choose to tell their story. They choose to tell the same story. And that's the problem. That's kind of the problem when, you know, be, why all heads be heated. <laughs> and I don't blame them. I may snap on them from my, you know, my generation. Um, I may make jokes about them being angry all the time when there's some good young artists out here. But the problem is, is they can't turn on the radio and just discover everybody because everybody sounds the same. Get what I'm saying? So it's not hate. It's just saying, tell your story. That's the point. Tell your story. That's what we always liked about all our hip hop legends. They were unique. They were different in how they approached their music and they had their own story to tell. Get it? Uh, Jada Kiss had to push back his uh, album. Uh, I always mess this name up. Ignitus, Ignitus, um, an album title that I think I initially made jokes about because I didn't know what the title or where it was coming from, um, but it was um, dedicated to a friend of his. But he pushed the album back, which was slated to drop this Friday. If you're from the future, you know what to do. You need to get your ass out of here. Uh, February 28th. He pushed it back to March 6th uh, out of respect for the late Pop Smoke. And he said this, and I quote, the New York hip hop community is mourning the untimely passing of one of our brightest young stars. And I felt it was best to pause for a moment to come together and reflect. This album means a lot to me. It celebrates the life of my brother, Ice Pig J, another one we lost too soon. Uh, it was Jay's dream for me to collaborate with Pusha T on a new song. The single we'd planned to release together, Hunting Season, is a lyrical metaphor about taking out MCs in the rap arena. And we didn't want anyone to confuse it with anyone else. So out of respect for Jay's memory, for Pop Smoke's memory, Pusha, I, Pusha and I agreed to put this one on hold for a minute. That song, Hunting Season, by the way. Pusha T and Jadakiss. If you know hip hop, let me tell you right now. Instant repeat. I'm glad I heard that song before the album dropped because now I am way more ready for this album than I thought I would be. Hopefully, a lot of it is fall along the lines of what that record sounds like. Because, dog, when I tell you the beat, the lyrics, the cadence, the flows, is all what you expect when you hear the names Jadakiss and Pusha T on a record. Honestly, I think I could take a whole a whole album. Give me an album of Jadakiss and, and Pusha T. And let's just throw in, let's throw in Benny the Butcher. <sighs> let's move on. Because I'm, I'm the, the, the bars that, that can be had on an album like that, but whatever. It may, that would never happen. Pusha T and, and maybe Kiss might happen. I mean, Fabulous and Kiss happened, and that was dope. A couple of albums that were released recently that people may be interested in, um, I'm somewhat interested in. I'm going to, you know, give them the good old gym test and check them out. Uh, probably offer them up as bonus content for my Patreon supporters. And if you didn't really pay attention to the intro of this podcast, and don't know what I'm talking about when I say Patreon. Patreon.com uh, slash hip hop now is where you can support this podcast to uh, help pay for things that bring you more content. If you enjoy this podcast, you know, there's way more things I could do. It's just that the resources are needed in order to do it. For the past three or so years, I've been doing this podcast without issue because, you know, I got the money to do it and it's fine. You know, I got it. But I think there are people who want more. There are people who have said they want more. And I feel like the only way that can be done is with your support. So uh, Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash hip hop now get 
exclusive, timely bonus content. Just visit patreon.com slash hip hop now and you'll see everything I'm talking about. Uh, but Planet Asia put out an album recently with 38 special called Trust the Chain. So I'm definitely going to make sure I check that out. And Smoke Dizza put out an album called A Close Mo- A Closed Mouth Don't Get Fed. Featuring uh, West Side Gun, T-Pain's on here, Dave East, Wale. So those are two albums, you know, real hip-hop heads. You either know about it already or you can go out and, and, and check that out. One quick side hip-hop, but kind of not thing, LL Cool J. Uh, helped Offset of Migos land his first acting role on NCIS Los Angeles. I just love even hearing about that because let me let me tell you something. LL Cool J is the GOAT. Just check out. <laughs> I did a whole podcast on it explaining why I feel that way now. Uh, but to do that, I think is dope and it shows unity in hip hop when it comes to older artists. Uh, versus younger artists and and showing love because you know rap is lucrative but acting you get paid more and if you can if you can make that transition into um acting after being a rapper you know you you'd be fine you you know you you look at common put it that way look at common we kind of know him more as a a damn uh, actor nowadays more than uh, a rapper. And let me just say this. We kind of slept on this last album. I think a lot of people think about uh, albums like B. You know what I'm saying? When they think of Common. And they think that Common is supposed to tear down every record. And all his stuff is supposed to be dope. But the man put out a memoir. And anytime you're putting out something called a memoir and not a book. That means you're about to say something really personal. And you about to touch on some real personal uh, subjects and all that good stuff. And I think the music on that album um, paired with with the memoir perfectly. I didn't read the memoir, but from what I know about the memoir, I think it just paired perfectly. And I think the sound matched also uh, because Common is is somewhere in between hardcore and like i don't know what open mic night lounge you know <laughs> poetry spoken word so to to have records that are like boom bap uh, uh side records that are like you know mellowed out uh a lot of jazz musicians you know um i know he worked closely with robert glassford at one point so it, it kind of meets that so I, i'll just say this to folks you know what I'm saying? To hip hop fans, don't approach Common's newer work like, yeah, every time I see him, you know, he, he ain't just, he ain't looking like the Common I know. He ain't looking like the corner. This ain't Sweater Hat Common when he was with Erica Badu, where he was trying too hard. This is a little bit more organic. This is a little bit more of a, an a, adult, a mature. Not saying that rapping over boom bap is immature, but just rapping about something different. You know what I'm saying? Like DMC just said it on this very podcast, right? You got stories to tell. And after you've established yourself as MC as the nicest and even the toughest, at some point you got to start telling some stories. Why? Because us as fans can relate to it more than anything. The more personal a story someone gives you in their raps, the more you are connected to them. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen uh, an artist who makes nothing but party records and then he makes that one record that's really personal and fans swear by it? Why? Because now they feel like they know him because they connected to that record. So I think Common, given his catalog, it's okay if he makes a record that's not B or one day it all makes sense or like water for chocolate it's fine because it's about the catalog what jay-z say hove on that new ish brothers like how come brothers were my old ish 
buy my old albums. That's going to do it for me for this week. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Vegas World INC. Support the Patreon movement, movement. Become a supporter of Hip Hop Now podcast at patreon.com slash hip hop now. Please know that this podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Doesn't matter if it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify. All you have to do is type in the words Hip Hop Now Podcast. Hit that subscribe button and stay locked in to a stream of dope hip hop content. Until next time, y'all. I am not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace. Dropping on the random.